Okay. Um, so tonight's work session is going to be taken up by um, a discussion about the 2015 budget and um, the work session agenda and information packet that were distributed last week had quite a bit of information and hopefully you've had some time to look over some of that. Sorry. There. Um, the, the information sent out was rather lengthy, but um, there's a lot of information contained in the department narratives, and then we've also provided um, some schedules that we want to discuss this evening. Um, in the one hour that we have this evening, um, my primary goal is to confirm with council um, some of the key items that we need to continue moving forward in the budget process. Um, before we finalize some other uh, specifics in the budget draft. Um, there's certainly a lot to digest in the budget, um, but we're going to be talking about some of the items where we need you know, decisions or just make sure that we're on the right track as, as we move forward. Um, oops. So again, the primary objectives are to keep the council and the public informed. Um, we want to try to identify any concerns early in the process so that we can um, change course and proceed with completing a budget that is acceptable to the council. Um, so in, in particular, we want to make sure we're on the right track in the areas that were on your agenda. Those are with the citywide goals, some fee changes, some staffing changes, the major assumptions that go into the budget, and then our list of capital purchases and projects. So, um, so the citywide goals, you have seen these a few times already. Um, this was actually one of the subjects of our last work session on August 18th. And during that meeting, a couple of members of council had indicated some interest in adding a citywide goal that was related to different areas of fiscal responsibility. Um, one of those suggestions was that we diligent, diligently investigate costs, another, and another was um, to reduce debt. Um, the citywide goals are really intended to be at a, at a pretty high level kind of policy type statements. So what I'm proposing here is kind of combining those two suggestions into one citywide goal under a general theme of fiscal responsibility. So that is in front of you, and I wanted to see if you feel that that captures the concerns that were raised at the last work session, and if um, we should add this to our list. I'm good with that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that was easy. Um, so moving on to the um, fee schedules. As I think you're aware, the council approves city fees and charges by resolution each year. We prepare a separate budget resolution and ask that that be adopted in advance of the budget. Um, we do that for a couple of reasons. One is that some of our departments begin to use those fees before January 1st, you know, park rentals and steam plant um, reservations. And uh, we also need a little bit of time to update customers, change our fee schedules, reprogram systems, that kind of thing. So we want to have that done sort of as early as, as possible. Um, the other reason is just the timing and dependencies within the budget. If the revenue assumptions are going to change, that probably means we have to go back through and make some additional cuts, either in the capital budget or in areas within operations. So we want to have that piece of the budget kind of nailed down um, before we finalize the rest of the budget. So we're bringing these to you early. Want to get your feedback on um, your thoughts on on these things. And and actually, there's not a lot of of fees that are that are being revised at this point. Um, one that was raised by Chief Clark was our parking fines. They have been $10 for a very long time. Um, he is 
suggesting and has articulated some reasons for this um, in the, his budget narrative, uh, but he's proposing to move that from $10 to $20. Um, and I also want to just point out that we have had a fair amount of discussion within the business community about the lack of parking and in response to that the city did go out and secure two parking lots that are being leased from um, the private sector spending over $20,000 um, a year for those parking lots. Those are, um, again, they're free and they are not monitored in terms of the time that people can park there. Do you want any discussion on it now or later when you're talking? Now, you're now. So as we move forward, we know if we should uh, You talked to that. the business people, but did you talk to any of the residents downtown? Because a lot of them, <laughs> you double the price of that. I mean, it, it's already tough on finding parking for those people. There, it's. <sighs> I've been there, done that with that one, and it, mm -hmm. you're constantly fighting to find a place to park, let alone, because uh, there's no, nothing in back of a lot of these buildings, and they've got to come out and move or do find some other means to take their groceries or laundry, that sort of thing, and to keep it, 20 bucks a pop can start adding up on a lot of them, and I've seen some of those tickets add up. For people, I don't know. I I think you ought to talk to some of the people downtown who how, live there. How long can they uh, park before they're in violation? Two, two hours. Two hours. And I'm, what I'm are the aware. hours from <laughs> beginning to end? Is it eight o'clock to f six, or is it nine to five? What's the? I think it's after five, probably. Nine to five. Thank you. Okay. I, I have another question that's related to that, and, and perhaps you can answer it. Uh, if a person parks at 9 o'clock and gets a ticket at 11.30, and they stay there all day, do they get only one ticket? Mm -mm. They keep going back over, don't they? <coughs> the answer to your question, they could get one every two hours. Every two hours, okay. Typically. Probably, probably one. I have seen a couple, you know, on that. But uh, yeah, it, uh, it it would help, I believe, in raising raising the fee structure. Most of the towns we contacted are at least at above twenty, some of them thirty, you know, on that. Maybe discourage some of the penalty parking. As far as the people that live downtown, I don't think they're purposely taking a ten dollar fine, you know to park there, you know, during the nine to five time where, you know, that's what you were talking about. It almost sounds like you were saying that was going to cost them more, more to park. And I don't think any of the residents really I've seen, you know, are purposely using the two hour spots because they live down there. Most of them are finding other places. Well, a lot of them don't have a choice. Is this is why I I know because I've been down there and been around those people that were, and they had to keep rotating rotating their vehicles or whatever. And I'm not I don't know the answer to it. I'm just saying that when you start doubling those fines, and sometimes there's things that come up, where, and they've got to take things up and down stairs and do uh, a lot of things that might take more than two hours. I just think you ought to talk to some of the people that live down there and get their feedback. It, it, it's, it's against the code, it, it, even at the two hours, whether it's 10 or 20, yeah, to park during the 9 to 5. Yeah. How many actual blocks have parking, or those regulations? How, how many? Yeah. yeah and what? what but it's basically the historic downtown, if you will, from about G Street over to E. Okay, uh, three any, blocks. Yeah up then, to about 4th Street. We do have a little section on 4th Street, but actually probably safely sack it to 3rd, G to G to E. Yeah, G to that's e. 4 by 3. Yeah. 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 That's, that's not very much walking. No. What towns, Terry, did we compare with? I don't have my notes in front of me, but I know there was uh, in, the, uh, in my uh, narrative part, which you may have in there, I was trying to think. We probably got half a dozen. I think I mentioned mentioned three of them. It might have been Gunnison, Breckenridge, uh, Buena Vista. Woodland yeah. Park. Uh, a lot of them are at 30, 30 bucks, you know. I think even uh, Brush, you know, was at 30, 30 bucks for the two-hour over-the-limit parking. 
Do any of them have parking meters? Uh, didn't ask that question. Okay. The other thing I wanted to ask is what are we doing on enforcement on the motorcycles that are being allowed to park in those yellow zones? I think that's where uh, uh, Public Works put in the motorcycle mm -hmm. parking on that. We allowed the, it's kind of wasted space there. The motorcycles could park park in there. You'll see the. Is that is that control over the overtime parking, the two hour? In there? Yeah, it would be. Yeah, it would. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any. Have you got enough staff to enforce that? Well, we we I mean we've got one one code enforcement officer to try to do that working five days a week. So, between a lot of a lot of issues, the parking is kind of one that we hit. You know, fairly often, but yeah, yeah. And to mention the parking meters on that, I, I still think it'd be interesting to maybe revisit the uh, kiosk, pay yeah. pay for parking. You know, instead of having a fine system where you have to be caught. But uh, I think the city's missing out on a good opportunity. Me you know, too. For that, you know, the kiosk modern day parking meter is in a lot of a lot of cities, a lot of towns around. I think that's something. Do you have any idea what something like that would cost to yeah, switch into that? I know what they cost a few years ago when I did that study on them. Each of them kiosks set up was about fifteen grand a piece. And, and that you, covers how many? You, well, places? you could you could set up probably ideally for us maybe one on each side of a block. You know, yeah, they'll take credit cards, uh, tokens, uh, and cash. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's uh, you know. I, so. What what kind of funds are we generating right now yearly on the uh, parking fines? Do you have any idea? Tops maybe twelve to fifteen thousand. Yeah, on that. If I we talked to Aspen several years ago. They're net uh, grossing netting over four million on their parking. Yeah. Parking fines or is no, it, do they have the kiosk? kiosk? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're they're how much? Four a little million? over four mil yeah. a year. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, different different situation, but really. It, to me, it makes more sense to, you know, if you want the controlled parking or that, make it pay for itself, you know. Exactly. That would do a little bit of streets, you know, several miles of streets probably a year. Take care of it. What's their practice on that after, say, say that the car's left there more than the allotted time? What, what are those uh, towns, how do they handle that? Are they issuing t citations as well? I think they could be issued a citation. Now, uh, I think there's still just time restrictions on paying on those kiosks if you want it. Some of the bigger cities may pay around the clock on their kiosks, but I've, I've seen, them, seen them in different towns, different ones on that. Some of them is an eight, eight to five, you know, eight to six o'clock on that, but uh, pretty, pretty nifty and pretty easy for anybody to, uh, any officer or anybody to go down and check on those. You know, once in a while you can see whether they're paid, paid or not. It's a pretty instant deal. There ain't no chasing those chalk marks. No. All on the tires every two hours sending somebody around and they've got a network calling, they telling, do. you know, hey, the person's coming around, you know, exactly. to, to, to move. So, uh, could you also, uh, I'm, and I'm sorry, but I, I, I meant to say this early on too. We have one hour um, <laughs> to go through the yeah. budget agenda, and um, and I am actually hoping we can spend most of that time on the capital list. Um, but I think you know it, this is sort of a policy decision that if the council wants to um, direct us, we can go back and. Um, dust off the information about the pay parking kiosk. I, I believe at the time there was a decision made, basically they we wanted to continue to provide free parking downtown. Um, so, but you know, a, a choice but would be to, to go ahead and switch to the kiosk. I'd like to see this kiosk thing sought out. Uh, certainly we don't have enough manpower to do the two hour parking. What Chief Clark has said is true. And if somebody hits out there to put a mark on, you got one call on the other, and I think we could probably pick up a lot of money for the city that way and, and assist us in our parking complaints. Thank I disagree you. with that. I think we ought to have free parking and uh, stay with the what we have now, but do $20. Okay. You've had meters put in and pulled out probably more than once, so I, I would again go back to your public to see what they think yeah I would not be in favor of charging for parking downtown uh, just off the cuff and I I think you probably ought to go to $20 I would hope Melody it would 
encourage some of those people to use those two lots that we've provided for them. That Our one's pretty close to them. They're being utilized. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thanks. Um, <laughs> so the next item that you'll see as a change in the fee schedule would be fire inspection fees for businesses. And um, this has been proposed by Chief Bess as a means to help offset the fuel costs of driving to the different businesses. So currently, um, the new business inspection fee is $30 an hour. We'd be raising that um, to 35 And then for existing businesses, it would also be increased $5, but from 30 to, um, I'm sorry, from 25 to 30 Looks like that's- Oh, well, you went from 30 to 25 Yeah, no, right? that's, that's not correct. <laughs> that, that should be from 25 to 30 um, so, and the, there's some rationale there too that the business is charged for the inspection on an hourly basis. However, there is a free follow up, and typically a new business does require at least one follow up. Um, and uh, this is just an attempt to help recover some of the costs for those um, specific services. I'd, I'd like to see more information on just what the impact would be to a business cost, uh, especially to the new business startups. Um, that seems like uh, you know, those numbers, the way they're presented, that's, man, it's only $5, but that's per hour. So what's a typical inspection? Ty typically it is just one hour. It's a $35 really? fee. Mm -hmm. And, and then how does that fit into the overall cost of a new business startup? Uh, what, what do we charge a, a business to come in here and get going? What are the- The city does not have business licensing or any other <coughs> fees. Um, I guess the only other specific businesses that are imposed fees would be liquor licenses, marijuana, um, Arborists, but the city does not have a general business licensing fee, so this often is it. Um, it depends on, um, I guess, you know, if they're setting up a new business, remodeling a, uh, you know, a structure or something, there might be fees related to that. But, but simply in terms of a business license, we, the city does not impose anything I there. I think in the explanation that uh, Fire Chief Bass said, he has, they have to take the, one of the fire engines to these places so that they're ready if a fire call goes out, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I understood it, I just read it today, that it's, it was for the gas, <laughs> right. for running the, 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 the fire engine to and from the, the uh, Right. So you have your whole crew showing up. So we're, we're right. certainly to not that. probably recovering all of our costs here either. We don't have a fire inspector like Wes Wagner used to be then, huh? We He's do not. Requesting one. Does that? What's that? Um, fire chief explained that in his uh, in information that he gave us uh, that he does want to get one. Yeah. First meeting. No, it's in here. Okay. I didn't see the it. packet. Mm -hmm. Talking about bringing back the fire marshal. So, um, so Jan, I'm I. I can support you on that. Okay. Well, I, yeah. At some point in time, we're going to talk about this position of the fire marshal. Right. And I assume we're going to talk about some offsets here. Is that right? If we have a fire marshal to do the inspections, then we wouldn't be running the pumper truck and taking a whole crew and sitting them out there on the. Well, he said one of the reasons he takes the crew is so that they become familiar with the business in case there is a fire, so that they know what the business, what that facility is. Yeah. That's the way I understood it. That's correct. And if. We can jump ahead to the personnel discussion too. Um, the fire marshal at this point is is not a position that we see a way of being being able to fund. Um, I know that that has been requested for several years by Chief Bess and by his predecessor. It also has some support from other department heads within the city, um, but we we really don't see a way of being able to fund that right now.
I think we should go ahead at least to start with, and I think also the sewer plant information okay. on the city. Aren't you just kind of doing an overview anyway so that we're, we've got well, more Well, we'd meetings. like to get direction from the council that these things seem acceptable to you mm -hmm. because we will go on from here and make revenue projections based on these fees mm -hmm. if our revenue projections are not what we think they are we will have to find other areas to cut in order to keep the budget balanced so if if i'm seeing a lot of um you know shaking heads of oh no we can't do that then um, we, we're not going to bring you a resolution with something that we know you're not going to support I, I personally so. I don't feel like I've got enough information on this to say go ahead and do it I mean it might be a great idea but I just I don't know I don't know what's the impact to business is what I want to know so in general it's going to be a five dollar increase so the, they'll go out the first time inspect have a list of changes that need to be made or additional information um, this the second visit is at no charge um, if all those things have been taken care of that's it if they come back and their list has not really been addressed um, then they may have to come back so then maybe it's you know another um, fifteen dollars or if they need to spend a full hour there it might be another thirty five dollars so you know generally we're seeing um, you know these these costs are fairly nominal in terms of the total startup costs for a business um, you know if you are asking me what are the startup costs for business again it's going to depend a lot on what type of business we're talking about what type of facility they're in and are we talking about increasing any other costs other than this one area here the fire inspection no the list in front of you is the complete list of what we plan to change when we bring back the fee resolutions so if you look well you were here last year I believe for the budget process there's there's a fee resolution that gets presented and there's multiple fee schedules attached to that we'll be bringing that back to you and asking you to reaffirm those fees and we'd like to highlight in advance for you what's going to change on those schedules and and actually if you look at that fee schedule from the fire department it actually explains this in in more detail as well um, most of those businesses are in control of how many times they come back no different than an inspection on a from the uh, building department if you do things correctly and correct the things they want it doesn't cost you much if you fight them and don't do it it's going to cost you mm -hmm. um, so in order to move forward would you like us to bring back further analysis of these fees um, or does does this seem like a reasonable change? I, I guess I'll also point out this fee schedule was originally put in place by Chief Taylor, I believe, in 2008, and it has not been changed since then. So, um, and this, you're just talking in reference to the fire inspection fee right now, correct? Right? Okay, and that only applies to businesses. This doesn't apply to individual homeowners or anything. So if it's an apartment house, that it doesn't apply there. But it is a business for people. So, so what is on the existing business? Is that what they have to be inspected periodically on a schedule or annually? They, so they have to be inspected once a year. I guess what you're telling me is that's just going to add a total of five dollars to the total cost of doing business uh, as far as cost paid to the city then I, I I just let's go ahead and plan on that okay 
Well, is it really going to, you know, make that much difference to them? Up there, how many businesses do you have? And then, is it really worth any of that effort or not? So, what is what is our revenue from fire inspection fees? You know, the summary I have in front of me actually has that combined with um, the fire plans as well, but that whole line item is $15,000. I believe the fire inspections are somewhere between five and $10,000 per year. Those so, figures are combined with what, Jan? Um, all of the fire plan, all, basically all the fire department's revenue, um, the fire plans, inspection, and response fees if they are sent out, deployed out on another um, I don't even see why that, how that justifies itself. I mean, if you don't have it separated out so that they could really see that it is making a difference. We do have it separated out in the general ledger. The report that I'm looking at doesn't have that. I just don't have that piece of data in front of me. Um, I guess if, you know, if we want to just kind of back up the, the theory behind this um, is that we do try to recover a portion of our costs on services that are very specific to one business or one individual. And we talked about this a little bit at the last um, work session in terms of, you know, general tax revenue is, is provided for municipal services that are available to everyone to whatever extent they tend to use them. Um, we do try to have some cost recovery on very specific services for, you know, specific users and this is one of those areas. It certainly does not cover the cost of the fire department, but it offsets a, a portion of their their fees, or I'm sorry, of their costs. Has any other cities been studied for this sort of thing, and what their fees might be? I will have to check with Chief Bess on that. Jan, I agree with Hal and Eileen. I think you should go ahead and buy on that. But um, Keith, I don't know where you are. Before you flip down now, you were you said two to three percent change on the dump fees, and isn't that also kind of in line with the uh, also some of the changes you're going to do in other sewer and water fees? Yes, I did have this on kind of as an FYI in terms of what you should expect to see on the the fee schedules. At the last work session, Hal had, uh, Councilman Brown had pointed out that. He would like to see a pretty extensive discussion of that, and we had pointed out that that would be discussed in one of the future work sessions. <coughs> so that is certainly too lengthy of a topic to, to go over today. So um, I didn't want to you know, ad address that, but let you know that we'll be revisiting that. And then the sewer plant um, lab and dump fees, um, that is, um, an area of services, very specific users, and there's a flat fee charge based on what test is being performed, and we are proposing generally two to three percent increases. And um, and this is also discussed in the narrative that was submitted by the plant manager. Um, he's seen some real market movements in the fees for outside septage, and we're proposing an increase there. Um, that's a little bit more than, than typical. I think we should go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> I think all these fees were prepared by the experts that are handling this day to day, and they are the ones know to know what it costs. Yeah. Um, so personnel is another area that we wanted to get in front of you early on in the process. This is our most significant area of our operating costs, both in terms of our budge, budget impact. Um, Excuse me, Jan, before we, go, we leave this, uh, for our future discussion of the water and sewer rates, uh, would you provide us with uh, the data that you're getting from your engineering and staff uh, reports and studies uh, that you're gonna base what your recommendation is on? Uh, 
I'd, li I'd like to see those and have them in, in time where I can digest them and understand them. Okay. Um, I'm not anticipating anything from engineers. Can you kind of clarify what you're, you're looking for? It, um, anything, that, any, anything that you've got that you're going to base your recommendation on okay. in terms of data, any rate studies or okay. any uh, cost escalation data or inflation data or what, just whatever it is you've got. Sure, sure. Thanks. Um, so, and I will point out too, as as is discussed um, in the narratives, w we are asking for funds to do a rate study in 2015. Um, we've been talking about that on numerous occasions. That um, so you're saying you haven't really done that before? Then we have done rate studies, and we are currently trying to follow those rate studies. Um, but periodically, it's time to do another rate study. The one for the sewer plant is from 2008, and the one for the water system is from 2011. Um, since those times, um, we'll, we will have, um, well, we've completed the sewer plant upgrade, so we have some revised costs there. And as you know, the water plant upgrade is in process. So after those are completed, um, we feel that would be a good time, uh, an appropriate time to do a new rate study and refresh those. The but committee that's, that worked on that last January, February, and March made that recommendation that we do that in 2015. That's correct. As we wait for these uh, two improvements to be completed. That's correct. Um, yeah, it's, it's been something we've talked about for a few years, but it kind of confirmed that during the budget task force meetings. So what we would be recommending there is largely based on the existing rate studies that have been in, in place for some time um, and the inflationary data that is cited in actually this work session package. And I think we were also hoping that we would have data from uh, the studies being done on the water infrastructure and the sewer infrastructure. On the cost so, side, yes. that's correct. Is your mic on? Supposedly. Can you hear her? Can you hear hear her in the audience? Hear Cheryl. Turn it. Oh, they could. Okay. Turn it toward you. Closer. Yeah. Cheryl, okay. put it right straight at you. There you I go. will get. Oh, does that help yes, if I get really close? Lot. Okay. Yeah. Lots better. Thanks. <laughs> this is a big one here, isn't it? Personnel. This is a big one. Yes. Um, so <clears throat> I guess just you know to preface this, this is the largest area of our operating costs, but. Um, keep in mind, nothing happens at the city unless we have skilled people on board. So as you read through the narratives, I'm sure you saw all the appeals for additional personnel. Um, I think across the board, all of the departments feel pretty squeezed in terms of the level of expectation and volume of work that is being asked of them. Um, but we, in, in staff's discussions uh, and preliminary reviews of the numbers. Oops, sorry. Um, the only new staffing position we've, we felt like w would be something that could be um, paid for and justified at this point would be a civil engineer and project manager position. And the expectation would be that we'd have some savings on our outside engineering costs to offset this personnel cost. Um, and also, as we have had additional funds to do additional projects, we are having a tough time keeping up with managing all of those projects. Um, it does take quite a bit of time to just do all of the paperwork involved with the bidding process, awarding the bids. You know, Even though we hire a contractor to do a project, we're, we're still involved in it. We're still out there. Um, you know, doing some inspections and you know. and that's been one of my of I mean empathy with you and uh, we have a lot of an aggressive uh, project uh, projects that are on the table and slowing it down doesn't mean that it isn't going to get done but it certainly would help you guys out if we're not ha you're not having to fly through some of these projects so fast and you can you know 
not have to go back and redo things and think that you might have not had to do if things were ad addressed a little bit slower. There, are you, uh, you've got that on one line. I, are you anticipating that would be one person? That is correct. Both of those? That is correct. And you're developing a job description and so forth and qualifications and criteria and salary yes. ranges and everything else. Huh? Yes, that is in process. It's not okay. finalized. No, no, no oh. projection on, on salary at all at this point? You know, there's a pretty wide range depending on the level of that position. Um, if, if the person is able to stamp plans or is, um, you know, a lo you know, lower level engineer qualifications. So we're still working through some of that, but it would be, you know, a fairly senior level person um, experienced person. Would this possibly eliminate some of the ne need for engineering on some projects or at least we partial? We do think that there would be some offsetting costs there. Yeah, you can almost pay for that right out of the engineering on that parking lot at the airport. Uh, <laughs> it, who would they come under? Who's per, or who would they work with and who, under whose purview would they be? Uh, um, we would envision this person to really assist all of the departments um, and their work would be you know, depending upon what projects we have in a given year. So for example in a year like 2015 if we're doing substantial work at the pool in Centennial Park, you know, this person would be helping that department. Um, of course their you know, basic study um, task would be involved with the streets projects where you know, in most years that's where we spend the most amount of money and have you know ongoing projects as we execute our our five-year streets improvement plan that continues to get updated um, so so that is an area that we're we're still discussing I mean it's likely that that person um, would be a direct report city to man. the city administrator because of the citywide responsibilities. Mm -hmm. But yes, we also recognize <coughs> that um, a, it wouldn't be a like lot with, of with that. the building department or the uh, community development person. No, well, we don't have a building department. Um, well, um, planning and zoning, whatever you want to, the community development, yeah. whatever. The I think term most is. likely it would be housed within the public works department. So I would. Wouldn't he be involved with inspections on those streets? And, Absolutely, uh, yeah. With preparing the bid packages, with you know the whole contracting <coughs> process, keeping up with construction schedules, and et cetera, et cetera. Exactly, exactly. That's exactly. where that management comes in. I think. Yeah. You, I so like you know to. I like the idea. Yeah, the guy's not going to be cheap if you get no no if you get what you want. No. But I really think there's a possibility of some real offset on this thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't Based know that it's going to come. I've seen <laughs> what we're paying for engineering services. <coughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I'm going to apply for the guy's secretary. I want to be the secretary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'd like to see a line added on that, and I think we've talked a lot about it for the last uh, six or eight months or so, and I think it's time we started really get some serious information down, and that is uh, uh, a line that says uh, local uh, legal firm or staff attorney and we start need we need to start really looking hard at uh, at transitioning our legal services uh, to uh, local either either hiring a local firm and transitioning or considering uh, putting on a staff attorney uh, if we've got enough legal work to where we could justify a full-time position. And that's going to require some trade studies and some, some in-depth review. And, uh, uh, but I'd sure like to say, I don't, I don't think we ought to kick that can down the road any further. Let's, let's start doing it now. I think there's some ways to do that. And one is to keep the firm we've got now under <coughs> contract to work in the transition. transition. Uh, and yeah, I think you're, you're going to have to be a little bit careful about uh, 
having some problems with the ability to do some of that work. They've got some conflicts there. Mm -hmm. Local, we're a small town, and you've got conflicts there. Mm -hmm. So maybe the, you know, that's that's a, and that, and that's a very real consideration because mm -hmm. every law firm in town is <coughs> likely to have some conflict somewhere. So I think we need a a, a plant, or maybe we have. Uh, maybe we have services from more than one law firm, depending on exactly which direction we're going and what we need at the time. Um, I mean, we have like a water, we have like an insurance, we have various law firms that we work for for different uh, professional areas, so there's no reason why that can't be done locally, too. And I would just say that you guys do have separate water council now, or general right. council. Uh, is that a, yeah. I thought that's yeah, what you were saying. Yeah. Okay. And that's pretty expensive, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we can't afford not to have it. Um, okay, and then the only other changes in terms of staffing, um, how you brought this up earlier regarding the fire marshal. Um, that is not a position that we feel like we're able to fund at this time. Um, however, there are a couple of positions within the organization that have that are currently part-time that we think the level of work and demands on those departments um, justify bringing those positions to full-time. Um, and that's within the fire department. They have, they have a part-time person who is involved with scheduling. So the fire inspections and, and doing some of the work that a fire marshal would. Um, so we think maybe a you know, compromise step would be to add some hours to that position. And um, You're saying either part-time or adding to a current already existing position? Correct. Okay. And then the other position is within um, the public works department. For a few years now, we've had a year-round part-time position, and we've had a really tough time actually filling that that position. Um, but we think that converting that from a part-time to a full-time position um, would help the department substantially with addressing um, some of the the demands on their time, and also just help us keep that position full. Um, and you're saying that that's in the fire department still? No, the second oh. position is within public works. Oh, okay. What about the police department? Um, in Chief Clark's narrative, he does also have a request for additional staffing. Um, but we do think that through 2015, um, we can get by with what we have, and then he would like for us to consider in 2016 increasing the staff level. When was the last rate study done on those to see if these guys are substandard? That is currently ongoing. Um, we are currently doing a local salary survey, and we have also updated our salary survey with the Colorado Municipal League's data. And we are seeing that we are substantially under the comparables in, in quite a few different areas. Um, that is something that we want to bring back for further discussion later. We're not. We have not finished reviewing all of that data, so. Um, I, I well, realize when you're he's asked for one more, but, and I think he needs it, but I think we also need to take a look at those wages those guys are making compared to some of these other agencies and some of the other departments and some of the people are, are placed in those and what these guys are doing for us. They're putting their life out there on the line, and it's getting hard to find people unless you've got the money to, to pay them, and especially with the cost yep. of living here. I, I, can't disagree with that. Um, one of the other things on your, I was looking at your list of turnover, and, I mean, because we keep attributing it to costs, and I'm wondering when you're doing this study if you can really be looking at also reasons why people are coming and going other than, you know, I know that there's housing has a, has a, a part of it, and, but when it comes down to is it full and part time, or is it, what, what are the reasons why this is taking place, because, I, I'm sure it isn't all just about money because there's a lot of people that actually come here to get away from certain uh, living conditions that may have elsewhere that this place does ha offer. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I'd like to see a 
better complete a bigger and better complete picture so that we when we keep giving these raises that many of us in the private sector haven't seen in years uh, that we have something to justify it other than just you know because everywhere else does it or you know they need it um, because that's the rate of uh, cost of living so mm -hmm. so part of our human resources processes are to track the reasons for turnover so we do have that data on um, so is that available to see too? Um, we can. I mean, we you don't have to, to put names to it, but right, right. So sure, we can work on putting together a report. Again, we're the play name the, piece. I think would be confidential. But pool. explain the market raise pool. I'm sorry. Explain the market raise pool. Um, so that is pending. Um, as it says, their pay increases are pending review of the salary survey, but we are proposing this year that we would have component for cost of living increase, um, and we do have some inflation data available, um, also a merit increase, and market raise pools for the areas where we have determined that we are under market and are not able to be competitive. Um, again, for example, in the police department, we have an open position right now, and we have had zero applicants. What are your other options on a no lump sum merit? So for several years, when there was some apprehension about um, the operating budget and um, whether or not the sales tax trends would continue, we implemented a part of our pay plan to have a lump sum merit increase. So rather than have that increase become part of the employee's ongoing pay, it was just a one-time lump sum. Therefore, we were able to control and you know limit the amount of our operating budget um, See, that was I increasing year over that. year. Because I think you're, I think you can get yourself in a, in a problem in a real hurry if you. I'm not against raises, please don't misunderstand me, but if you continue to raise and get these raises up too high, and all of a sudden the trend reverses itself, you're stuck. Yeah, I understand that with Keith, I, but I'll, having been through that experience time and time again as an educator, we got the lump sums and we didn't know what we were going to get next year. And we couldn't buy the, the new, uh, a newer car because ours was dying or whatever. It, there has to be some change in that base. Oh, I don't We're mind the ma raises. Don't, I'm not saying yeah. uh, I, I go along with the raises, but I think the merit pool goes above and beyond that. That's and good. It's for, it's for I, dedicated I, over and above service. I don't mind that. And but, that's what I want. We still have to bring that But base I don't up. want it to be something that's permanent there. Because oh, the merit pay. No, I, I don't think the merit yeah. pay should be. <laughs> no, that's okay. why merit pay well, is merit pay. Well, what we are proposing here would be that the raises are broken up into a pool that's cost of living across the board, um, just an inflationary factor, and then another factor that does recognize the merit. We, we see a lot of compaction of the actual pay down at the bottom of the pay range. Everybody's about the same. So whether they're you know, really taking extra steps to improve their skills and be innovative in how they do their job or not, they get the exact same cost of living raise as the next person. So I by no that. breaking the raise pool into two different components, we're able to start separating some of the staff into, you know, recognizing that you know, they're contributing at but we Another didn't level. even give cost of living there for a few years, did we? In, in between 2008 and 2011, we were holding the t that thing down. The, right. There were several years where we had salary freezes in place. The last few Those years. people suffered. The last couple, and two, like three years. Sheriff, uh, the, the sheriff's department and, or excuse me, the police department and the fire department, they are not getting the candidates that they want to choose. Correct. From. And so what we're seeing basically is that you know, the 2% cost of living has not enabled us to 
keep up with market right. demands. Right. So if, if we're advertising for a full-time benefited position and nobody's applying, we're not keeping up. Or well, are you sure that there's equity in the, in, I mean, if you're having problems, say, like with the police department, uh, maybe that's the one part department that needs to be focused on and not necessarily doing that across the board for all employees. I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying that. And that's what the salary survey should tell us. So we're in the process of, of updating that, and we'll come back to you with, with more information when that's ready. Um, so just moving along, um, you know, do you want to just recognize that I, I think a lot of the other departments had very valid requests for personnel? Um, what you're seeing as the requests we're bringing in front of you are the ones we feel are the most important. Um, and I'll you know, tie this back to citywide goals as well. Um, one of our goals about um, maintaining existing assets, I think that applies to the employees as well. So given a choice in some cases of being able to take care of our existing employees um, versus bringing on a new staff member, we're, we're generally saying, you know, we want to recognize the work and this, you know, the existing staff that we have and make sure we're taking care of them. Um, so the final, um, actually, move back one. Um, the next agenda topic for tonight was to talk about some of the basic budget requirements and the assumptions that we'll be using as we continue. Um, the first one is inflation. The Denver Boulder Greeley CPI was released a couple weeks ago. Um, indicating that prices increased 2.9 percent overall or 3.9 percent for energy. Um, so that will be our main basis for inflationary um, expectations at this point. Also the development related activity has been picking up um, in the city and we do have some revenue attributed to that, very closely linked to that, in particular tap fees. Um, so at this point, we are going to assume that's going to continue at about the same pace as in 2014. Does the city's in, uh, cost track with that CPI? You know, it's, it's hard to say because there's just so many variations. We don't have a real, you know, centralized purchasing department and, you know, a lot of commodities. Each department has pretty specialized needs. So, um, you know, given lack of local data, I think the Colorado data. No, I mean, the track within your have. department of your own cost, not necessarily everybody else's. I'm talking about, you know, is your is your uh, costs uh, that that keep going up? Are they related to the CPI? Can you see that, or is it uh, outside the parameters? I mean, there's people out there that thinks that CPI is bogus in the first place so I you know it, it does it are they are they are they legitimate figures so and I, and I would figure that would be something you'd want to know but I don't know I you know I, I think energy is pretty generic commodity so that um, very likely tracks um, I mean, in the case of gas costs it's, it's much higher than that um, well, that's what I'm saying you know because I mean there ought to be some average in there with with the cost of in you know, your increases if they average out to that and if it's a realistic figure. Okay. Um, let's see. So, again, for development related activity, TAP fees in particular, we're going to assume that we're going to see this higher level of activity going forward, which is, is good news for the water and sewer funds if that continues. Um, so, sales tax has been on a pretty long trend here of. of increasing every month. Um, year to date in 2014, we've seen an increase of about, I believe it's 5.6 percent now. Um, so we are projecting out that 2014 will be up 5 percent and we'll see additional 2 percent growth in 2015. And then in terms of the requirements section, we carve off 44 percent of that right off the top and use that for capital. Um, the 2A funds, which are all used for 
infrastructure. Some of that does go towards maintaining, um, and some of that does go towards capital. So we'll be um, divvying that up on a 40-60 split for next year. Um, and then 2B funds, which is the occupational tax on lodging, um, will direct 75% of that to offset some of the capital. We have quite a bit of spending there next year, um, so they'll make a fairly small dent. But um, And then the other 25% is offsetting some of our operations. And at this point, you know, the, those are our assumptions. As you know, there's the second a second line item. You, th you think you ought to leave that where 2014 is? Because you got a you got a big bump in 2014, right? We we anticipated Correct. though very what two percent again in last year's budget? Yes. Yeah, we you know every year you have kept it at two percent. Uh huh. We've always gotten I more, think, and we're happy I to think have that. Five percent so is just a <coughs> projection. That's so. just an action or s information. It's not changing the the budget. Well, it does projection. determine how much revenue we're assuming that we have to work with. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm saying, so, so you're anticipating another 2% in sales tax so we're in 15 over what you're getting this year? Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that that is still conservative, but given that we've had a fairly long run here with consistency. Um, yeah, 2014 has been real strong is my only input there. The year before it was five, per, five or six percent also. <coughs> in fact, for the mm -hmm. three years before that, it was very high. It was above the two percent, right? Is that well two, above. Is that two percent just based on what you projected, what your projected budget was for 14? Mm -hmm. It's not including the five percent. It's on top of the five percent. Yeah. Oh, you're looking at seven percent. I'm sorry, Tom. Misunderstood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Seven yeah, percent over 2013. Sure but like I said, we're <coughs> hoping that still is a fairly conservative figure. The, the trend has been outpacing that for some time now. I don't think it hurts to collect more than you tell me today. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'd back that 2% off, but that's just one person. Um, you say 0%? Yeah, I'd say I'd leave it where 2014 ends. That's zero percent growth next year. Yeah. I think we can make two percent easy. I know we're losing a lot of businesses. Oh. I've seen six of them already, and there's probably going to be more. So I, I know where Tom's coming from. I'm not opposed to what his idea is on that. Till we see what happens. I mean, it's only gravy if it is, right? Am I wrong? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we. So I'm hoping that she gets it. Well, we it's a two percent, it's four percent. Right? And then it comes back to you know, trying to present a balanced budget, and um, if we cut that back, we're, we're making some other cuts. And um, we're going to leave something out. Cuts, if we don't put that two percent. Yeah, I know. Lots of them. You know, fortunately, we are in a position of having fairly healthy reserves. If we don't hit that, you know, we're not, you know, in trouble or anything. Um, and we certainly can make additional cuts later in the year. You know, if it if it looks like things have, are turning another direction. Well, re realistically, Tom, I w I can see your I could see your concern in 2008 and 2009 and even 2010. Yeah. But the economy's doing fine and continues. Mm -hmm. I think we can have a 2% You in there. have become the eternal optimist. <laughs> and I'm all Why for not? I'm all for you. I hope it happens. Um, okay. And at this point we are assuming just the same rules apply as you know. So if you were looking at 13 2013 that with the 5% that came in on 14 and the 2% you're talking about a 7% overall over the year 2013, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're bu you're the city's bumping along really well. But all the time I mean, that's a considerable amount to keep putting in our budgets to keep going up and if we do have a downturn it's gonna it's gonna hurt a whole lot worse if we don't be a little bit more conservative too at this end as far, far as what I can see 
I mean, we've got a lot of projects and a lot of debt out there that we got to look at. What debt? Uh, got a lot of projects. I, I think the no debt. A lot of projects, no debt. Well There's controlled. debt. <laughs> what, a sewer plant? Um, well, it's debt. <laughs> We've, so, been paying, we've been paying our interest I'm not rate saying you're not fines. paying it. I'm just saying we, it's, it's debt. So when we're talking <laughs> about sales tax, we are talking about general level. fund. General fund. Right. All right. So, um, okay. So I think I probably need to just wrap it up there. So um, we'll, we'll bring some of this back to you at the next work session. Um, just go into the final slide. Um, the remaining timeline would be we'll have another work session. Um, September 15th is a regularly scheduled work session, and then we plan to have a special work session September 30th. That's not um, a date that you normally would be meeting. In order to meet the statutory requirement to submit a budget by October 15th, we'll be using the next regularly scheduled council meeting to present that to you, which is October 7th. Um, and then follow that up with additional work sessions as needed. And um, do you feel that you covered enough tonight? Or if we, I mean, since it is such a, we're actually going to have a, sh should be a fairly short council meeting that maybe if we extended this work session a little bit, you could cover the ground that you wanted. I don't have a no. problem with that. I think it's a good idea. Well, I've heard enough for one night. That's all I can digest. Mayor. Okay, it's all over. Take a break here and then we'll start the regular session.